everyone is well we are back with our third session and we are going to be looking at topic 218 we are going to be looking at christianity versus the kingdom and that is our part two so as we have others joining on let's already start by a prayer father we thank you we invite you holy spirit come and have your way come and speak to us we give you this session that we have right now come and teach us come and bring revelation come and ground us back to your truth mighty father we thank you and we ask in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ and everyone said amen amen and amen we are going to be looking at something very amazing I love when we are able to go back to the truth and to the foundation. We are going to be looking at Christianity versus the kingdom. Um, I know that um, uh, Pastor Leslie has touched the part one. So I am going to be continuing with that. And I'm going to be touching uh, the part two. It is so important to understand that when Jesus Christ um, was here and Jesus walked on this earth, he over and over talked about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is like the kingdom of God is at hand. He was always talking about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. So it is so important for us to go back to the basics and the truth. And that is where we have been originally. That is where our faith has been originally grounded. So today's Christianity is far from the original idea and let's compare this is gonna be a little bit touchy <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> for some but very important for us to be grounded in the truth as bible school student so when we look on the side of christianity we can see loving god means having positive feelings towards god but when we look at the kingdom of god and what the kingdom of god was is supposed to be and was and is supposed to be love is not a feeling but it is an action and we can see i'm going to be giving you scripture backup scriptural references in everything that i'm going to be saying so that you can see that the real truth is in the kingdom of god when you look at john chapter 3 verse 16 it says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life to love god is to obey him to give him first place in our hearts first john chapter 3 verse 16 to verse 18 by this we know love because he laid down his own life for us and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren it is not just jesus christ showing us love by laying his life down for us but we also ought to do the same the bible says to show love to our brethren so love is shown by action when you read the scripture there it says but whosoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him how does the love of god abide in him my little children let us not love in word or in tongue but in deed and in truth first john chapter 5 verse 3 also says for this is the love of god that we keep his commandment and his commandments are not uh, burdensome it is so important to understand that according to the kingdom of god every time when jesus was talking about the kingdom of god it is important to understand that the basis the foundation is love but love is shown in action it is not just a nice feeling that you have over you know positive nice feelings that you have towards god but it has to be shown in action now when we look at christianity on the other side again we can see the fear of god is seldom discussed it's rarely discussed the fear of god but when we look at the kingdom the fear of god is critical and for we are to fear nothing or anyone beside god himself and himself alone fearing god is realizing that he is holy sovereign and is an all consumes an all consuming fire we can see that uh grounded again in hebrews chapter 12 verse 20, 29 for our god is a consuming fire and if you look at and i'm 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 i'm, I'm going to be a little bit and uh, not harsh but should i say i'm going to to just <laughs> 
be blunt <laughs> just be blunt about this we we are in a time whereby uh, the fear of god the fear of god and which we know it's reverence for god is really really going out of 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 of, of the kingdom of god and of the the body of christ that that there is that you know body body you know thing with god but we have to understand that god is sovereign god is god above all you know, God is not buddy buddy. Okay, I mean we can see in the Bible. Yes, God says to Abraham as a friend, but it doesn't mean that way to the level that the fear of God has been so diminished to us not even being able to respect the things of God. Let me tell you something. Someone will go super early to work, but when it comes to the things of God, people are so chilled and they are so relaxed. You can see people just arriving the time they want. There is no pressure that you know what? I reverence. I love my God. I fear my God. I respect and honor God. You know that honor that respect of god that i have to go to church early i also have to serve you know that 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 we are getting into that that environment someone can sit in the presence of god at the same time get on a phone and speak and go out of the church let me tell you something we fear men so much more than god if your boss right now i don't know if you are working for anyone but if your boss was just you were having a meeting i don't know maybe not your boss <laughs> anyone as important as a human being let us say i don't know who is a humanly important to you and to all of us it might be different it might be the president others it might be a boss a humanly boss others it might be a parent and they are talking to you would you immediately would you not even would you go quickly on the phone and just be chilled and just from nowhere just start talking on the phone we go to church in the presence of god you hear phones ringing you hear people running out of church to go and answer a phone i get an understand sometimes it might be an emergency but it has gotten to a level whereby the fear of god has gone out of the church and i believe that is one of the reasons why we are not seeing a lot of supernatural i think that i i feel that is one i'm not saying it's the only reason but i feel that is one of the reasons why we are not seeing really the power of God manifesting strongly in the church the honor the reverence for God that honor that we see in the new testament that is being shown for god that is going out of the church you know people are being begged to just serve god you know to just serve god to just give your time to god someone has to beg you someone you know to give to god <laughs> has become a tug of war and where is this where is this coming from a fear of god and let me tell you something even when there is no honor, let me say this, even though I have a friend, but they don't honor me, our relationship is going to be shaky. Now imagine the sovereign God whereby there is no fear of God. But at the same time, that is the God we want to go to. And it's a God we say, you are our Lord. You are our God. Lord, we love you. Lord, you are our everything. But when there is no reverence, there is no honor, there is no fear for God at all. We be in his presence and we take it like we are just chilling or we are just in a club as we are in the presence of God. It is so important and we pray that the fear of God will come back not only just to the people in the church but also the leaders that the fear of God will come back to the leaders that a leader will be very careful the word they give. We have leaders giving word, a word of God on a Sunday or on a week time without studying and sitting down and asking the Holy Spirit and listening on God and having that fear of God and saying, God, is this what you want me to speak this Sunday? You know, that studying the word of God whereby leaders just are taking pulpits and the whole altar of God just like it's anything. You know, you when you look at Jesus entering into the church whereby people had made the church uh, as a, a temple, a place to, 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 to trade, Jesus was so angry at it. But we are also in a time whereby even leaders can stand at a pulpit in front there and are not even having any fear of God. So we are in some, some, I don't know what time. And I pray that the Lord will be able 
to bring the fear of God back. I am telling you something. If the fear and the reverence and the respect and the honor of God comes back in our life, we are going to be able to see the supernatural. We are going to be able to see what the disciples and the apostles walked in. We are going to be able to evangelize and bring many to Christ. The revival we are calling upon, the revival we desire is there. It is there. It is there. There's no way we are going to walk without fearing and respecting and honoring God. And at the same time, we are asking for a revival. We are asking for lives to be, to be saved and transformed in our communities. When they look at us, there is no reverence. There's no respect. When people come in our community, in our fellowship, there's no reverence. There's no fear. There's no respect for God. So one of the things that need to return to the body of Christ is the fear, the reverence, the respect for God as God Almighty, sovereign God, the consuming fire, the Lord Almighty, the Lion of Judah. It has to return to the body of Christ. So well, let's go ahead and then we also look at another very important point. Christianity, repentance is a one-time event. So according to Christianity, we see this chilled thing of there's no need to repent after a person becomes a Christian. Now, when we look at the kingdom of God and how Jesus Christ describes the kingdom of God, we see that repentance is a regular occurrence for the Christian. To repent means to change the mind. Our minds must continuously be changed through daily renewing in God's word. They must be a daily, a daily. It has to be daily. It is not a one-time thing. There it is. I repented. It is not a one-time thing. It must be a daily renewal. We must be able to assess and reassess ourselves daily. And we must be able every time to realign our lives, to realign our daily lives according to the word of God by asking God through his word to renew us. And that is the kingdom of God. Pastors, according to Christianity, pastors preach tithing, pressure members to fund the church's projects, which is really not needed. It's really not needed if people get to honor, if people get to understand the love that he has laid down his life for us. If people get to really understand the kingdom, there is no need to pressurize people, you know, to do this, to tithe, to, you know, pressurize them, to fund churches, projects, building roof, building that. I am telling you something. If the people of God get to understand what the kingdom of God is all about, there would be no need for someone to be pressurized. Now, on the other side, we can see here in the kingdom, pastors preach New Testament giving. That is 100% belongs to God. Members meet the needs of widows and orphans. We can see in James chapter 1 verse 27, pure and undefiled religion before God is this, to visit the orphans, widows, in their trouble to keep oneself unspotted from the world. When you look at um, the kingdom of God and controversy to Christianity, you can see the difference. And when we look at Christianity also more here, many ministers, especially TV preachers, are greedy for monetary gain. Uh, Titus chapter 1 verse 7 warns, For a bishop must be blameless, as a steward of God, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money. They get rich from people's donations. They manipulate listeners to give with emotional speeches, even speak threats and curses to those who don't give. They make merchandise of Christianity and sell the word for a profit. We can see Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 3. By conversiousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber. When we look on the side of the kingdom of God, true ministers of the gospel do not make money 
of God's word. They receive donations to support their basic needs. The laborer is worthy of his hire, but they are not greedy for riches. They are not pushing for riches. You read Luke chapter 10 verse 7 and remain in the same house eating, drinking and such things as they give for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. And we see here Jesus warning. Now when we look again on the other side, we can see that churches teach blind submission to all authority and they usually cite Romans chapter 13 and they cite it out of context. When we look at the kingdom of God, we can see here the Bible actually says God is our authority. If human authority contradicts his divine commands, we must obey God first at all times we must obey god first at all times that is what the word of god says and that is what we see in the kingdom of god acts chapter 5 verse 29 but peter and the other apostles answered and said we ought to obey god rather than men obedience ought to be directed to god and not to men so many times in, in Christianity, we have seen many actually obeying men than obeying the word of God. Why? To please men, to please leaders. Now, the word of God, and when you look at the word of God, it says there you ought to obey God. We are not people pleasers. We are all about obedience to God. He is our sovereign God first. You please God first. Everything you do, does it align to the word of God? And it's very important because it, even as uh, the New Testament warns about the false teachers and the, the false prophets that we know have crept in in the body of Christ. And many of them are teaching this self-exalted kind of gospel whereby they, 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 they direct the gospel to themselves. People are ending up worshipping leaders and it is not supposed to be like that. God first. I obey God. If it is not in the word of God, I do not do. And it is so important for us to watch out for such things because in the times we are in, this is such a danger. And so many preachers, even preachers on big screens, Christian networks, you can see them redirecting people to themselves. It is not biblical. Biblically, the Bible says over and over, God must be cursed. Are you when you worship man? Cursed are you when you fear man? Cursed are you? The Bible makes it very clear. So we ought to be very careful with what is going on in our time. So this kind of teaching for me, I believe, has come in a time like this. It is so needed in the times that we are in this kind of teaching. So I would like really to ask uh, the Bible school students, share this kind of teachings because you know what? They are able to help and sensitize so many people because so many people might not have this kind of truth. But it's so important that if possible, you know, we discuss some of these um, things in our small groups, in our fellowships and even forward this or even share it so that people can get to understand because let me tell you something so many people perish as the word of God says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge so many people are perishing they are Christians but they are perishing because they don't have these truths so when we also go ahead and see and we are keeping on we are comparing Christianity to the kingdom of God. Here we can also see that um, uh, the cr Christianity churches teach a self-focused doctrine, which I was just talking about just now. Conversiousness, how to love yourself and improve your life too. It's you, 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 you. And Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 2 warns about this. For man will be lovers of themselves in the last days, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, 
and holy how to manipulate prayer of jabez for your own desires we have seen this so many times it is me i myself you know <laughs> my little family i and me and we can see this in first chronicles chapter 4 verse 10 and jabez called on god of israel saying all oh, that you would bless me indeed enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me that you would keep me from evil that i may not cause pain the goal is to get from the lord and we can see this uh in christianity whereby you are getting from god but when we look at the kingdom of god that over time in the new testament is talked about we can see the bible teaches that godliness with contentment is great gain we saw men disciples of christ after christ has gone we saw many disciples we saw them even apostles and those who were um, servants of God in the word of God in the New Testament suffering and dying dying for their faith but they were able to stand strong push on the word of God it is not about I and me it is more about making sure godliness and contentment is a great gain when you read first timothy chapter 6 verse 6 no godliness with contentment is great gain we are to tear down pride in our hearts turn from lusts of this flesh and of this world follow jesus christ as an example of servanthood the goal is to give to god matthew chapter 11 verse 29 take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle I am lonely in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to verse 9. Let this mind be in you which is also in Christ who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant coming in the likeness of men being found in the appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross therefore god also has highly exalted him given him the name which is above all names it is so important as we are in the last days as we are in the last days it is so important to be content to be content with what god right now with what god is giving us let me tell you something that is happening the enemy is advertising daily the enemy is making sure he throws things at us and that is how he's driving us off track from the will of God and from serving God and from being content and from focusing our eyes on the things that are above so that we can start focusing our eyes on things of this earth, of this world. And we remove our eyes to focus on things that are above. Let me tell you something. That is the trick of the enemy in our time right now. If the enemy sees you are focused on the things above, he is going to start pushing you and and you know pushing you on every side let me tell you he's going to start attacking your finances he's going to start showing you how so and so is is financially doing better look at them they're having that and that is something that we need to watch out as children of god we need to be content and understand that our eyes must be looking on things above we must be focused here we are all sojourners we are passing by we are going somewhere. We have a permanent home. And if we are not serious, we are going to become lukewarm and we are going to become discouraged because that is the, the, what the enemy wants to do to us as children of God. I know I've seen this so many times. You know, I was just uh, meditating and looking at what the world called success. You know, when you look at what the world called success and prosperity and you have made it, it's so different from the word of God. Look at Jesus. Jesus, he, he came and 30 years, he was 30 years old and he, 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 he finished. Let, let's look at him. Let's, let's first leave the apostles and all the rest. But let's look at Jesus. 30 years on that cross, he came for a purpose. On that cross, he said, it is finished. Meaning he came and fulfilled his purpose. And he was focused on his purpose. 
And the enemy is going to do everything possible to make us become, to lose our focus on the things of God and our purpose. You know, the world would call that a loss. The world will call Jesus a loss because according to them, 30 years old, gone. Okay. <laughs> Very famous according to the world. I mean, according to the world, Jesus Christ is a celebrity. But according to the world, according to them, it's not a success. It is not a success story. It is not, according to the standards of the world, it is not a success story. But according to God, Jesus came and did and finished what he was supposed to do. There were no castles. Okay. So the, there were no castles built. There was, but he came and he focused his eyes on the things that are above. And that is how we ought to be. We ought to be content with what God has given us and focus our eyes on things that are above. Let me tell you something. The devil is going to advertise. He is going to advertise. He is going so much to advertise that he makes you become um, anxious, uh, you know, because he knows that if he can pull you out of the focus, then he's going to be able to win. So, children of God, let us focus on the things that are above and let us be content. Our father is loving. Our father is also extravagant. Our father is also, is also a prosperous God. He's not going to leave you. Without what you need, he's going to give you what you need. And he's even going to give you more. But you have to understand the way the world looks at blessing and prosperity is not the same. The Bible lays it down. And we have seen that this has also crept in the, in the church. And we ought to be very careful about that. Now, let me try to be fast. <laughs> now, when we look at the kingdom of God here, we can see... Sorry, I'm trying to discover where I was. The goal is to give to God. Yes. Okay, so when we look at Christianity, we can see churches teach the purpose-driven life. Okay, and then when we look at the kingdom of God, the word of God teaches the spirit-led life. Okay, so it is so important to see the difference between the two. There's a thin line between the two, but you must be very careful. Okay, so we can see churches are teaching the purpose driven life but the word of god even christ over and over it's written there spirit led life our life must be led by the spirit churches hierarchies as uh, resemble the governments of men pastors boards committees rule over people but when we look on the side of the kingdom of god church leadership is based on god's government no hierarchy pastoral leaders serve and lead by example bishops are overseers deacons are servants and the relatives uh, priests and to god we can see here it's all about function the kingdom of god is all about function now this side is titles and we have to be watchful about that you know you can read and see revelations chapters 2 verse 6 they will be warning but this you have that you hate the deeds of nicolaitans nicolaitans which i also hate Revelation chapter 2 verse 15. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. And that is where we have the hierarchy of leadership. When we look at Christianity here, we can also see people may buy into econism. Lie which states that the Pope is the head of the church and the Catholic church is the only one true church. This is deception from the spirit of of antichrist when we look at the kingdom of god true disciples know that jesus christ alone is the head of his church as scripture as it's written jesus has no mediator he is the mediator his flock consists of those who hear and obey his voice anywhere in the world unity amongst brethren is by the holy spirit there's no compromising doctrine, uh, doctrine regardless of denomination or cultural divisions and it's so important to understand that Jesus Christ is the only head of the church not a human Jesus is the only head of the church now when we look at Christianity pastors wear titles such as doctor 
father, reverend. They delight in external show of superiority, superiority by their robes, collars, and special seats. Jesus warned about such men in Matthew chapter 23, verse 1 and verse 12. It is a long passage, so please read it. Now, when you look at the kingdom of God, you can see God sets in place humble shepherds to lead his flock. They are men of integrity who don't care for people praise or titles of men you can see that in first peter chapter 5 verse 2 shepherd the flock of god which is among you serving as an overseer not by compulsion but willing not by this honest gain but eagerly that is a warning that is being given and it's an instruction and it's so important that you are able to understand these things so you have to get to a place whereby you understand this the next one is that we can see christianity in the side of christianity christian psychology and counseling is esteemed as beneficial for improving oneself it is so emphasized so much so <laughs> that you can find that it's even overemphasized than the word of God. Now, when you look on the side of the kingdom of God, Jesus told that we must deny ourselves, take up our cross, die to self and follow him. Mark chapter 8 verse 34 to 37. That is what Jesus is saying. We ought to carry our cross and we have to follow him. You know, and here it is all about sit down, tell me about it. Psychology and counseling is esteemed beneficial above even the word of God. Like it is so, so esteemed, sometimes even above the word of God. And we must be watchful about that. Christian merchandise is reluctantly, reluctantly marketed for profit. Often people believe they are more spiritual or holy if they have the latest Christian trinket or something. It is all about these things being sold. And we can see that in Second Peter chapter 2, verse 3. And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. We have seen this even on Christian <laughs> televisions and Christian programs and, 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 and awesome preachers around the world. And I think we have to watch out for things like this when someone feels like they have bought this specific item they feel more spiritual they feel more close to god but when we read the word of god it is all about the word of god and faith in our lord jesus christ now when we look on the side of the kingdom of god christian things those are crosses t-shirts jewelry prayer beads it is do not impress god okay so what impresses god is your heart it is your heart. It is your heart is what impresses God. There are so many scriptures uh, talking about that. First Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7. Churches use numerous modern Bible translations which lead to confusion. So many, <laughs> so many numerous uh, Bible translations. But when we look at the kingdom of God, the inherent word of God does not change truth will remain truth truth is hidden in parables wisdom in, is found by searching scriptures daily and studying these scriptures perspect upon perspect and line by line we ought to study the word of god sit down study the word of god it is good to have books people have written books books are not against books and we are not against books but it's so important that the child of god gets the, the the raw material which is the word of god that every child of god can sit down and really really study the word of god i'm talking about study the word of god every child of god must get to that place whereby they study the word of god because these things have taken us to a place whereby people are just now it's the modern bible it's this translation it's the other translation it is just reading the word of god it's that simple read the word of god line by line understand the word of god ask the holy spirit to reveal to you uh, the revelation and the the wisdom that is in the word of god the rest can be secondary but the word of god is the first and it's that simple it's not complicated 
Predictions for the future masses will be served through great sweeping revivals. Christianity will bring peace and unity to earth. Biblical philosophies for the church, and this is the part of the kingdom of God. Biblical prophecies for the future. Many will fall away. This is the word of God. Many will fall away from the faith to the doctrines of devils. Only a small remnant will be saved. Love will grow cold. Wickedness and troubles will increase. And we can read that in Matthew chapter 24 verse 1 to verse 12. Telling us about what will happen towards the end. What is going to happen. Now on the other side when we look at Christianity. And what is being grounded is that predictions for the masses will be saved through great sweeping revivals christianity will bring peace and unity to the earth and this we see so many times that unity is being pushed and, and we are not talking about the good kind of unity <laughs> you know, there's a good kind of unity whereby we are saying oh body of christ let's come together but the other kind of unity the unity which is saying muslims i mean everyone all the all the the faiths uh must be one Okay, we all believe one God and we already seeing it being pushed. Okay, we already seeing it being encouraged so much by so many organizations in the world right now. I will not touch that because I think it might be a sensitive part for some, but it has been pushed so much at the moment. The unity, the peace, or oh, we are all one. We are all one God. No, we are not. Let me tell you something. The word of God says the only way to the father is through Jesus Christ. That is what my Bible says. The only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. You know, when you look at so many other scriptures, Luke chapter 18, verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, he will really find faith. Will he really find faith on earth? First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 3. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. They shall not escape. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons so let us not be afraid or be discouraged when we see many falling away because the word of god said so it's going to happen many are going to fall away so let us be very careful even when we see many are falling away let us stand strong our faith in god so we conclude today in summary saying god wants us to operate in his kingdom god wants us to operate in the kingdom, not in Christianity, but in the kingdom. And that is the message we see Jesus coming and saying over and over. Even the parables that Jesus lays down, he gives, this is the kingdom of God. This is how the kingdom of God is. So many parables are laid down talking about the kingdom. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, mighty Lord. We ask you, mighty King of glory, that you open our eyes. You open our spiritual eyes. You open our spiritual ears that we will be sensitive and will be able to discern, mighty Father, in the times we are in. May we be able to discern in the times we are in, mighty Lord, the truth of God from the lies of the enemy. We will be able to discern familiar spirit. We'll be able to discern the Antichrist spirit, mighty Lord, to your true spirit mighty father we ask you lord and we pray in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ and everyone says amen it is my prayer that our eyes are open in a time like this that our ears are open in the time like this that we will be able to discern to separate and to discern and to understand that there is a spirit of antichrist out there and there is the a spirit of deceit there is so much it is a familiar spirit that is creeping in that we are standing on the truth and we stand on the truth which is all about the kingdom of god have a blessed evening everyone god bless you for being here even as late as it is sacrificing your time and being here to learn i pray that god blesses you may god bless you see you next week